Hello and welcome to Bespoke Unit. My name is Paul Anthony and this is Day Cigar Review. We're going to be reviewing the La Aurora 107 Anniversary Edition and the Nicaraguan blend specifically. We've covered this brand's storied history, which was the first cigar factory in the Dominican Republic that's still operating today. So I'll put a link in the description below where you can read more about that. But for the purpose of this review, we're going to be going into detail around this specific blend. I hope you enjoy. As always, for our bespoke unit cigar reviews, I'm using the bespoke unit cigar formula, which is downloadable from bespokeunit.com. I'll pop a link in the description below, as well as these cigars have been stored using Boveda 69% RH packs now for a couple of months. So they've been properly acclimatized and should provide the optimal smoke and experience. So with that being said, let's jump in to the initial pre-light considerations for the cigar. So we're going to be looking at the color. It's definitely a dark hue to this. There is some veining on the leaf, the wrapper leaf itself, and the uh, leaf provides a slight sheen. When we go into uh, the aromas of the body, I'm getting a nice leather smell, some oiled leather, hay, and a little bit of barnyard. And then we're going to do a bit of a dry drawer as well. First off, drawer is perfect. There's a little bit of resistance, but there's nice free airflow. I smoked about 10 of these now for this review and everything that surprises me on the, the dry drawer is how sweet it is. It's kind of like a candied cherry flavor to it or a candied sweet. And again, picking up that kind of oily leather. As I said, I've smoked about 10 of these previously for this review and I'm excited to share with you uh, what I think about the cigar. So now we're going to look at the first third tasting notes. Uh, the cigar opens up um, kind of heavy. Uh, I'd say it's definitely medium plus, almost venturing on full. The one thing I do really like about this cigar is how there's such great mouthfeel um, from the open. I think it comes down to that kind of leathery, oily uh, taste that we picked up in the, in the pre-light aroma and pre-light drawer as well. I'm also picking up some nutty woodiness as well as some light white pepper spice as well. On the retro hail, the one surprising thing about this cigar is it's actually like slightly floral, uh, which is a quite a nice layer to it as well. But without a question of a doubt, the main thing to take from the first third is definitely that oiliness, that leatherness, that woodiness, and a little touch of pepper as well. I know myself, as well as many of you, like to know where the tobacco in the cigars we are smoking comes from. This is a Nicaraguan Puro with a Nicaraguan Habano wrapper, and then the binder and filler are both from Nicaragua, but they are undisclosed by La Aurora. It's uh, obviously an ultra premium cigar, so it's completely long filler and handmade as well. As we're just warming up into uh, the first third of the cigar here, I thought I'd talk a little bit about the combustion of the cigar over the 10 I've smoked. Uh, we assess a number of different uh, items in our scoring system. One, the draw, as I said, pre-light, and during the light is ideal for me. A little bit of resistance, but not too much. The temperature is nice and cool. It never gets too hot or overburns, even considering it's a medium plus kind of oily stick. The angle of the ash has been relatively good. I've had one or two that have had very minor runners on them, but nothing to be overly concerned about. Again, especially considering some of the veining and the oiliness and thickness of the wrapper leaf. And finally, the ash quality has been outstanding. I've regularly got two and three inch ashes on it um, and broken them off myself. Um, so overall construction and combustion, very, very good on this cigar. So now we want to take a quick look at the presentation, which we also feel is an integral part of the overall smoking experience. First of all, we're going to look at the band. There's a double band with the La Aurora 107 and then a sub band with Nicaragua under it. Uh, I'd say the band's fair. I wouldn't say it's exceptional. There's been some lining up issues and a little bit of excess glue, but overall it does give a nice uh, appearance to the cigar. Uh, the box itself, this one in particular is 20 Robusto cigars. 
Um, there's some light screen printing on here. Uh, you can see it's just a plywood construction box. Um, inside the box, we have some additional information. Uh, this cigar is actually from the uh, Tobaccos of the World program, and I'll, I'll provide a picture of this on the uh, bespoke unit right up as well that you can see. Uh, inside the box, again, the cigars are nicely presented there as well. So overall presentation's fair. I wouldn't say it's uh, exceptional, but it's, um, it's definitely up to par, especially considering this is a $9 recommended retail stick. As we're talking about presentation, we can also then fold into uh, the occasions that this cigar may be good for. Due to the medium plus even kind of full bodied profile on this cigar, I'd say it's more of an evening cigar. Uh, it can be, because of the price point, I would say it could be fairly casual, but because of the, the very nice strong pro flavor profiles, not overly complex or overly burdensome, it could be a good cigar to take to an evening event, an evening barbecue, maybe even a wedding or a, a birthday party with friends. Uh, because it's a hearty cigar with regards to food pairings, it's gonna marry up very well with meats. Again, talking about barbecues. Also, I actually find the cigar to be somewhat the um, uh, kind of uh, saline so it kind of desalivates my mouth so maybe you'd want to have uh, something like french fries or salted peanuts that will kind of kick up some of that saliva again and then with respect to drinks pairings uh again this dries the mouth out a little bit it's quite earthy leathery woody so i would personally pair that with something that was a little sweet to say like a sweet rum uh, one that might come to mind would be a uh, diplomatico uh, mantuano uh, maybe some Florida Kanye 18. Uh, also other pairings such as Scotch whiskey or bourbon would go particularly well with a cigar. Maybe even a, um, a nice hearty red wine if you want to kind of stay in that earthy kind of tannic um, mode with what this cigar is giving you to complement that as well. Sometimes on filming days, things just don't go your way. I'm here in Florida and uh, there's actually a big storm rolling in. So I'm going to jump ahead and do the second and third, third uh, tasting notes of this cigar. As I've already mentioned several times, I have smoked 10 of these, so I've got a pretty good uh, understanding of what's gonna be coming up. With respect to the second third, we're gonna be continuing that leather flavor, the woodiness, as well as a nuttiness. I kind of drop off a little bit of the spice during the second third. I wouldn't say there's a massive uh, story being told here, but as I said, that kind of leather oiliness is a really strong selling point to me for this cigar. And again, on the retrohale, I'm getting that slight touch of floral. As we progress into the final third, some interesting things do start to happen. I start to pick up a licorice note, as well as uh, maintaining that leather and wood throughout the cigar. And then on the retrohale, it's, a, it's floral with a touch of leather as well. As we always like to do with a cigar when we finish, we talk about the mouthfeel as well as the evolution of the cigar. I think the mouthfeel of this cigar is absolutely fantastic from start to finish. It really does cover the palate extremely well and stimulate it, as well as give you a, a very nice, wholesome, full body experience, even though it's a medium plus flavor profile. And then with respect to evolution, I'd say it stays quite linear um, through the first and second third with some slight changes, but the third really does kind of kick in some different flavors as well. So overall, a very fantastic cigar. So I just want to conclude my thoughts on the La Arora 107 anniversary Nicaraguan blend. Overall, this is an absolutely fantastic cigar for the price point, and I give it an A for that particular score on our review matrix. As for $180 or $9 a stick, I think it represents very good value with respect to the flavor profile, the construction, and the overall smoking experience. If we go into the actual raw score that this cigar got, it was 82 out of 100, and anything over 81 actually qualifies as a five-star cigar for our review matrix. So I do consider this to be not only an outstanding value cigar, but also an outstanding cigar on its own right as well. So if you haven't tried the La Aurora 107 yet, please do so. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at what it brings to the table, especially if you like some of the aforementioned notes in particular the leather and a little bit of floral on the retrohale and also engaging with that great mouthfeel. With all of that being said, I really hope you enjoyed this review as much as I enjoyed uh, sampling the cigars myself. 
If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the section below, as well as check out the links in the description for other resources from the world of Bespoke Unit. With all of that being said, my name is Paul Anthony, and I'll see you in the next review.